this is like one of the things that I do like that I am so proud to be a part of because mm -hmm. the the groups, the men that we help, you know, and, you know, sort of lend our either expertise or just kind of walk with are okay. everybody here knows, but maybe they don't, you know, it's male survivors of sexual abuse. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I have clients, you know, in my private practice, female and males, mm -hmm. but that, it, before I was involved with these guys, it was such an unspoken about mm -hmm. population. Mm -hmm. And the thought that a man could go through this yeah. was such like a foreign thing to so many people. Yeah. And to find, you know, when I first heard about these guys, I was like, oh man, this is, I got to work with these guys. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's it, awesome. It, yeah, it, it was like, it just blew me away. And then when I learned about them and started working with them, it's just like every day, more and more just blown away. And you've been and you've been working with them for, you know, four plus years. And, you know, one of the things I like to reiterate any time that I get, you know, get a chance to is like, you know, Menhalen has served um, 1600 male survivors of, of sexual abuse and um, sexual assault, sexual violence. And um, it is really been done, you know, by so many folks who are like volunteers who are not mm -hmm. getting paid to do this work, who are creating this community, creating a space um, for so many folks who have been, you know, overlooked and misunderstood. Um, so many men who've experienced trauma and violence, sexual violence, um, who haven't had an opportunity or space for them to create community. So Men Healing has been committed to doing that for many years. Um, and that's the reason why we're doing this, you know, this 90 days, $90,000, um, you know, campaign with the effort of really just making sure that no one is denied access and the opportunity to be a part of this community um, who've experienced sexual harm and violence as an adult. And, and just making sure that that accessibility is available to anyone. So we don't want anyone to be denied because of resources, because of funding. So any money that you can donate to this cause um, to this point, um, over the last 25 days, um, we, you know, we've received about $26,000 in donations. So we make a good progress, but we want to make sure that we hit that goal. Um, and that's part of the reason why this IG Live is in place, because, you know, we want to show folks the work that's being done, like people like Rich, um, and the lives that are being impacted. And more importantly, we want anyone who's watching this, this video is going to be saved on a Men Healing YouTube channel, along with all the other IG Live videos. So if you want to, please share this information with anyone who's out there who might be suffering in silence. Um, and so, got that out, bang. Um, <laughs> Rich, uh, Rich, man, you're such a dynamic person. I mean, <laughs> talking to you early, I was just like, oh, wow. And everything you said just makes so much sense. Um, you know, and um, so I'm excited about this topic because I think the information that you're sharing tonight is going to be so relevant for many people, many people who've experienced any type of trauma, um, you know, any type of mental challenge. And uh, so, Rich, tell a little bit, tell us a little bit about you, the mm -hmm. work you do, and um, yeah. Cool. Well, let's dive in. So first, just to kind of place everybody, I do want to, people ask me, hey, you know, like you just did. Mm -hmm. Why men healing? Why this type mm -hmm. of work? Mm -hmm. I've had friends that literally have just looked at me and said, how, like, why? Mm -hmm. Like, how do you deal with this? Like, mm -hmm. what? <laughs> I just want to go to work and have a good time and just, that's, you know. And, you know, and they're like, and you're smiling through it. And I was like, yeah, but how can't I, man? It's like, mm -hmm. you know, we, we're here to, like, help each other. Mm -hmm. You know, is really, I know that's pie in the sky thinking to a lot of people, but it's, we should be helping each other. Right, you know, right. And the stats speak for themselves, especially with this, with this male end of stuff. I mean, when you talk to people about, you know, female survivors, you know, just quick and, and everybody says, yeah, statistics, this, 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 that. Okay, let's just take one in four female have, have gone through this, you know. Mm -hmm. sexual abuse then they're like well, yeah well where's men and i'm like one in six right and that just simply blows people away yeah they have yeah. no clue that this is such a prevalent thing 
you know, and the other thing just to place everybody is this 20 year, you know, reporting thing. And I know we've probably heard other people say this, but you know, people go, Hey, how come, how come they didn't speak up earlier? Mm -hmm. You know, and this is throwing away every other sort of societal, you know, group pressure, anything, you know, right. literally 20 years on average yeah. before, before a male, you know, speaks up. Yeah. So that's what that's the that's to finish that why off. Okay. Yeah. Now yeah. jumping into the how. Mm -hmm. So I kind of approach things a little differently. I'm a somatic educator. Mm -hmm. And what does that mean? It's it's kind of like if somebody says what's somatic these days, I laugh and I'm like, I don't even want to define it because it's mm -hmm. like turning into like mindfulness. Mm -hmm. And I joke around with everybody and say, Yeah, I'm really waiting for there to be like mm -hmm. mindful toilet paper just so I can like buy some. What? And, okay. like, and like put it on my shelf and be like, hey, uh -huh. let's not lose ourselves in the marketing. Let's uh -huh. like stay with the work and remind ourselves like we're here to help each other. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's the important thing, this connection. Mm -hmm. Okay. So how do I connect? I connect mm -hmm. somatic, soma, it means body in Greek. Mm -hmm. Okay. So instead of cognitively just kind of talking about things, I would deal through the body. Mm -hmm. Okay. So a lot of the people that I see, you know, people go to talk therapy, right? And you sit mm -hmm. and you talk and it's great. And there's some therapists that also work somatic stuff into it, body stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, I specialize in how trauma, stress, anxiety, all of this stuff affects our body, but not only how it affects our body, but how we can use our body to help with our thinking and our emotions. Mm -hmm. Okay. So normally the two ways of thinking about this are if we're processing and we're kind of thinking about things, we're being mindful of it, mm -hmm. we're using our mind, okay? Most of us are really good at understanding, oh, and, the, and the, we've been taught our brain leads everything. Mm -hmm. What we think is what we do, okay? I get brought in when that's not enough mm -hmm. or simply talking about things isn't quite doing it, mm -hmm. you know? And stuff is going on in their bodies you know, I specialize in teaching people, hey, this body trauma plays out in the body, you know, stress plays out in the body. You know, it affects us physically, how can we learn how to do that? You know, mm -hmm. how can we learn how to work with this thing, this physical thing, mm -hmm. to not only affect our physical being, but also work with it from like a body up, mm -hmm. you know, and affect us emotionally, and affect our cognitive skills. So I'm not saying top down is bad. I'm saying it's awesome. But I'm just saying, hang on, there's another part of this that most of us aren't taught. And it's, hey, pay attention, not only pay attention to what's going on in the body here, but let's learn to use it to our betterment. And not only our betterment, but to the people all around us that we care for. Okay, so that's yeah. kind of plain language of what this somatic work is about. Yeah, yeah, I love it. And I, I love like one of the things you said to me, you said use the use your body to inform how you think about things. And, you know, to to your point earlier, um, just now, um, I think a lot of folks when, you know, Vessel van der Kolk comes out with the body keeps a score, you know, mm -hmm. Dr. Bruce Perry talks about, you know, the neuroscience. And so a, a lot of people are talking about like the body, you know, trauma lives in your body, right? You know, I have yep. some friends who I'm just like, they're not even in this work. And um, the other day we were having a conversation and he was talking about something that really affected him emotionally and psychologically. And his, his reference was, was like, instead of saying I'm in my feelings, he was saying I'm in my body. And I was like, wow, it's interesting that you're just naturally referencing that casually in conversation, you know? Um, and it was, it, was, it was just a testament to the fact that I think even though we're not even cognitively aware of it and intellectually aware of it right and having access to this information we feel it in our bodies and yeah. so and so the funny thing about like your description just now is because like um you know people think of mindfulness as a way to approach you know the the way that bo your body is keeping the score of that trauma mm -hmm. and i like your perspective too because it's an added perspective because you talk about let's start within the body yes Yes. Right? And talk a little bit about that. Like, what does that mean when you're talking about what's going on in your body? So that's right. Yeah. So you, probably mm -hmm. could, you know, in our different talks and everything, you mm -hmm. picked up on the fact that I kept asking you, 
What are you doing in your body? Mm -hmm. You know, and we talk about the trauma plays out in your body and everything and might live in there depending on everybody's different wording and everything like that. Mm -hmm. But I want to take it another step and teach people that not only is it playing out, but you're actually doing and you have some control mm -hmm. over what you're doing in your mm -hmm. body. Okay. Now, why that's important, and I'll drop another couple of things here. If I was to ask you what an emotion was, mm -hmm. we're talking, we talk about emotions and uh, all this stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So, but, but we very rarely say, but what is an emotion? Like not mm -hmm. anger, not sad, not, but have you ever thought about what an emotion is? Like, how well, would you I, would, I would be cheating if I, if I answered it, because I okay. already talked about it. And I already was thinking that same way, right? It's a, like a response to a stimulus, right? Yeah. Well, not, neurological, yeah. Not only response to a stimulus, but I, defi I mean, I define it as a physical set of actions that you do mm -hmm. in your body. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's different than a feeling. A feeling is how we process what we're doing in our body. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I split the two just so we can work with these emotions. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when I get angry, we've all been angry, I'm sure. I have two mm -hmm. teenage sons and they excel at making their dad somehow, even though it takes a lot. Mm -hmm. Our kids, God bless them, we, you know, <laughs> they know how to get to us sometimes. I know when I get angry, before I even like elevate up, because I do this and I've studied my body so much and everything like that, I know these two muscles start tensing up. I notice my breath starts changing, my vocal cords, you know, my neck starts bracing. I'm mm -hmm. doing things in my body, even though they might at first be unconscious. Mm -hmm. First, I show people like through mindfulness, mm -hmm. you know, how do you be aware of what you're actually doing, what you're what's going on in your body? OK, mm -hmm. now the next step is once you're aware of this, how can you learn to actually, you know, use that to help yourself? Mm -hmm. You know, we talk about I work with distress responses, right? And we talked a little bit about that. And everybody kind of thinks uh, distress responses are these automatic things that just happen. Mm -hmm. Okay, I get brought in to show everybody, okay, yes, and no. Like, mm -hmm. if you're trained, you can actually use and sort of alter some of these, these, I like to call them reactions. Mm -hmm. You know, we spoke about this, the difference between a reaction versus a response mm -hmm. to something. Okay, reaction in my language is just like automatic. Okay no thought no nothing it just happens there's no there's not much it's just a reaction mm -hmm. okay i try to teach people how to work with their mind and their body especially people that are dealing with trauma to respond to these things that normally would set off a reaction mm -hmm. okay but you can't just you can't just think about it you actually have to do things differently right right i can't tell you just don't do that that's impossible right. Got to right. show you how to replace it with something else. Right, right. Because we were talking about that earlier too. Because you know, in this in this concept of control, and like you know, this notion of free will, and people have the ability to just change their behaviors because we can think through things. Especially like mindfulness and awareness of something doesn't necessarily give you the capacity or the skills to right. change the reaction that your body will naturally have. Also, it is, and, it, and you also make the point that it's not always natural. Like some right. of our, re our reactions are also being informed by experiences, right? And so the same Absolutely. way those experiences informed our reactions, we can develop these skills, which you're gonna give us an example tonight yes. of how to, how to develop a response that yeah. can kind of like help replace those reactions that and we talked about this early as well, that might have served us. And that's the thing, it's particularly of interest to me as I think about historical trauma mm -hmm. and trauma uh, that experienced by black and brown people, mm -hmm. um, you know, constantly experience trauma while, you know, the individual experience of trauma is, is something that you're currently dealing with, this historical piece, this ancestral piece, right? That it's being passed down in the body and how it served us, those reactions Absolutely. served us at one point. Mm -hmm. um, but now we're at a place where we're not underneath the same type of stress, let's say, as, as, uh, uh, as slavery, as, uh, you know, Dr. Joy DeGruy talks about in post-traumatic slave syndrome. Mm -hmm. But now you're talking about how can we get the skills to train our bodies to respond. Right. And so let's go. Okay. So how do I do this? I said we, like, 
deal with the stress responses. Okay. Yeah. And I start, I told you earlier, I think they're misnamed. I think they should be called distress reactions. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're training to get them to be distress responses. Okay. So I got to give you something to play with. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. And one of the deals that I make with everybody, you know, so anybody watching this and everything, it's my safety contract, you know, and I basically tell everybody that I'm working with that they're in charge. Mm -hmm. okay? So just because I suggest something or just because I say, hey, let's try this, you know you best. Okay. Mm -hmm. So everybody that's watching this, you know, either play along or you know you, but, you know, maybe take a step back and just watch us do it, mm -hmm. you know, you know, but you're in charge. That's our deal with each other. Okay. Right. So I'm going to give you something to play with and anybody that else wants to play along. Okay. But how would I give you something to play with? Okay. So what I came up with was an exercise from a dear, dear friend of mine. who's a colleague and a mentor of mine, Paul Linden. And I tweaked it around a little bit because I like playing with balloons. Uh, you know, and we borrow and, and, and poke holes in each other's things and make them better and, and all that stuff. So what would I do with a balloon possibly? Okay. Because so I got to give you something to play with so you can figure out what's going on. When I ask you what's going on, what are you doing in your body? Mm -hmm. I need to give you something to, I can't just talk about that. That's too easy. I need you to experience this. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you could, who cares, right? Nothing pretty much probably in your body. You don't care if I hit the balloon. I could, mm -hmm. but okay, no. nothing. Mm -hmm. Okay. You care if I get hit by the balloon? Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah, whatever. Okay. So what could I do here for this, you know, thing here? So what I got is I got a big old microphone that I'm going to put right here. And I also got the balloon's mortal enemy, a big old scissor. Okay. Okay. Your, your ears are okay? That's not turning up too loud or anything like that? Okay. I want you to pay attention to what you're doing in your body when I introduce the scissor to the balloon. Okay. So I'll give you a countdown because I'm going to, uh, you know, I don't want to surprise you with it. Okay. Ready? So three, two, one, go. Okay. So, so what, is, what did you notice you did anything with your body? What was going on in your body there? <laughs> um, yeah, I tried to be cool, but there was a part of me that was bracing myself. Yep. Um, I felt kind of like tightness. Yeah. And in, in my like ears, because I was preparing for like a sound, and then um, my leg kind of like twitched a little bit. Yeah. Um, I was preparing for like an impact, of a, a sound. I was preparing for a loud sound um, that could potentially hurt my ears. Yeah. Okay. All right. How about how about anything going on with your breathing? Um, kind of like help my breath. Yeah. Help my breath, yeah. And we all have, I just happen to notice that. So, but mm -hmm. everybody mm -hmm. might have different reactions. And I, mm -hmm. you know, I usually let people do it and don't, you know, unless I happen to notice something, I'll ask them, mm -hmm. you know. So, okay, so that's us being aware of what you are doing in your body, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's being aware, okay. But that's not enough. It's like, okay, we're where we do that. Great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's the first step. Mm -hmm. But now how can we do, and I'm going to show, you know, sort of an example that basically mixes some mindfulness and somatic practices. Okay. And this will be the experiment we play with. That's sort of our control. Okay. okay. So, you know, I asked you earlier today if you had like any special practices like mm -hmm. yoga, martial arts, all that jazz, mm -hmm. you know, and I, and I said, Okay, that's good. Don't mm -hmm. do those. Like, just mm -hmm. be normal. Just be normal, Rich. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. just like, okay. you know, so anybody else that's playing along, mm -hmm. just be a normal human being. Don't try to, like, do any special things or anything here. Okay? Okay. Because that's not how we would go through life. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay. So this may seem weird, but what I want you to do is relax your tongue. Whatever that means. Just, just let your tongue be relaxed. And is you get your tongue relaxed, I want you to become aware of by relaxing your tongue, does that affect the musculature in your jaw? Yeah. Does that affect? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And now is 
you tie your tongue into the jaw there. See if by relaxing your tongue and your jaw, if that actually can affect your, nest, your neck musculature. Okay. Yeah. And if you can bring that down into your shoulders. Okay. And once you can kind of tie that, then you bring that down into your chest and your upper back. Again, it just started by, we're just relaxing our tongue. Okay. We think about tongue. Now just bring that same feeling down into your core and make sure your belly is actually moving because breathing is like a really good thing for us to keep doing as humans. And uh, so just make sure your belly is actually moving. Okay. And now what I invite you to do is while you're keeping your tongue relaxed, if you could think of something that you either care for or that cares for you greatly. Okay. Or maybe it's something that you love or that loves you greatly. Or if you can't think of anything like that, maybe it's just like an activity or a place that just makes you feel safe or whole. Okay. And just relax tongue. You're thinking of that thing that you love to do or be with, that person or place. Okay. And you know what like a firefly or a, or a lightning bug is, right? Yeah. Anybody ever asked you, besides maybe me, to be a lightning bug's butt before? <laughs> no, because <laughs> I'm the only annoying person in the world that would ask that. Okay. So what's a light? I know you can't do this, but what's a lightning bug's butt do? Is it the rear part of the lightning bug? It lights up. It lights up. Okay. <laughs> it lights up. Okay. Okay. So and again, I know you can't physically do this, but I'm going to ask you to do it anyway because I'm annoying. Okay. Mm -hmm. But in a good way, hopefully. Okay. So we relax our tongue. We think of that thing that we care for that cares for us. Okay. I want you to glow out like this lightning bug to the walls all around you. Or if the lightning bug doesn't work, think of a glowing ember, like the heat or that glow that it puts out. And I want you to literally like glow out to the left, the right, front, back, up to the sides. Okay. Just lighten up the whole room all around you. And while you do that, you keep relaxing your tongue and glowing out and think of this. You bring the mic back in, you bring the balloon back in, and you go three, two, one. Okay. Was that different? Yes. Okay, how? <laughs> um my body didn't do the same type of things. I didn't hold my breath. I didn't feel myself kind of clench. Right. Um, I just felt more relaxed yeah. and like prepared for the pow, as my for brother said. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so before I dive into like what, what the heck just happened, because people are like, well, what'd you do? And I've had people like ask, did you just hypnotize me or what'd you do? Like, what happened? Like, what's mm -hmm. going on there? Okay. And it's not that. You got, you did that. Okay. Mm. That's the first thing to understand is you did something. Just by different. softening my tongue. By softening, you did something different in your body. I led you mm -hmm. through it, mm -hmm. but you did that. Mm. You did something different in your body. Okay. What is it about softening your tongue though? Okay. So here's how this works. Okay. okay. Here's what we just did in three, three quick steps. Okay. So any sort of stress, anxiety, trauma, somatically in a somatic world, I'm, I know I'm painting a big picture with a broad stroke here, mm -hmm. but if I was to use that broad stroke, any of this stuff is experienced as like a compression mm. or there's a term, you know, uh, smallify, mm -hmm. it like it, it like tightens up, you know, you tighten your muscles or you like hold your breath or you like pull back. Okay. And they could be little micro movements that you don't even realize you're doing, okay? Hmm. What this relaxing did is parts of our body, we can use parts of our body to affect other parts, okay? Hmm. When was the last time that anybody asked you to relax your tongue before? Oh. Has anybody ever asked you that in your life? Mm. No. So that's why, that's why we picked that one, okay? Mm. Because it's like, okay, hang on, let's use a part that's not usually connected to something. You know, mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be the tongue. You know, I've had people that were like, Rich, I can't do this. I can't, I can't get the tongue. I was like, okay, hang on. Let's, and I started with the shoulders. Mm -hmm. But I like starting with the tongue. The tongue's just so 
this naturally, if you relax these muscles in your tongue, they help relax, you know, these muscles in your jaw. You can do the opposite. You can tighten your jaw and tighten your tongue and it does the opposite. We're learning to relax mm -hmm. a part of our body to help us then relax a bigger part of our body. And then we take it by relaxing these two, that's affecting this musculature. Okay, mm -hmm. so first I'm getting you to relax physically. And relax your body. So that's And the relax piece. your body. That's right. the somatic piece, yes. Right. So okay. relax your body, okay? Mm -hmm. Then the next piece is this thinking about something that you care for that cares for you or something that you enjoy doing, okay? We have a, re a somatic response to that. Just thinking about things that we enjoy doing our body actually is doing other things, okay? The last step in this is, even though we're just thinking it, and I wish one day, I, I, I hope to have like the way to like measure this, because I can see it and people, once you get kind of trained in this stuff, you can actually see just this thought of expanding out all over the place, you'll see people's shoulders all of a sudden like loosen up and get like bigger, mm. you know? So it's loose, it's able to move. I'm just walking you into a, a more comfortable, relaxed way. We can move faster, we can respond better when we're relaxed but aware. As opposed so it's to, the opposite of smallifying and tightening the, yourself up. It's yeah. the exact opposite. Yeah. Now I'm not, I'm, I don't wanna explain that to everybody until after they've experienced it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> but you guys just experienced it. It's like in a low level mm -hmm. with a balloon like not really attached to anything unless you're afraid of balloons then maybe mm -hmm. a, a higher you know reaction to it but i want people to experience this stuff this way when it plays out in a different avenue of their lives that they may have to deal with you know some real stuff that they went through mm -hmm. they start understanding oh wait a sec these are those same things that are playing out like i'm tightening my breath my breath's getting shallow oh, i'm tightening my shoulders oh man i'm blocking my jaw in okay hang on i'm doing certain things here mm -hmm. okay how can i i can't just not do them I can't mm -hmm. tell somebody don't do that <laughs> mm -hmm. it'd be like me telling people to relax they just want to strangle you right <laughs> and, and just rich just to clarify too so yep. i can make sure that everyone understands this piece mm -hmm. um and so like in addition to the breath work right because you're yes. like breathing focus on your breath make sure your belly is is moving, moving. right yeah. like you're supposed to be when you breathe and you're also like helping us like um, you're introducing. So there's like the breath work, there's the mindfulness when you're thinking about your children. Yeah. And then, oh, well, I was thinking about my children. <laughs> um, you and then there's the, the somatic piece, which is the physical like adjustment of your tongue, the softening of your tongue and the yeah. way that the tongue influences or has a physical effect on other parts of your body. Yeah. So there you have like all these things, you have mindfulness and body work that's happening at this point. Yes. And so you're saying like, these are skills like that people can utilize, you can help them and do somatic work, they can learn these skills so that they can, because it's inevitable. One of the things I was talking to, you know, uh, another group that I do called Black Men Grieve, um, mm -hmm. and one of the facilitators, co-facilitators were talking about like, you know, how do we prepare people for the inevitable experience of trauma? Right. Yeah. And, and again, going back to my experience and, you know, my work and my focus um, with black and brown people that we, we're constantly like in the midst of potential situations where they could be traumatizing. Right. We're yeah. like, you know, at the at the least high stress and anxiety evoking situations. Right. When we go on social media and then physically like in life, in real life. Right. Um, when we hear police sirens, when we, you know, things that are associated with, with harm and trauma and violence in the past, right? So we're going to constantly experience these things. And you're saying through somatic, similar to what we just did on a light level, you can help people develop and somatic can help people develop those skills to do that in preparation. Exactly. I mean, the, this is the only, I mean, I work with a lot of different populations and a lot of different traumas. So, I mean, I help first responders, I help one of my other big areas is people that are dealing with cancer or other terminal illness, or mm -hmm. they don't know if it's going to be terminal or not, you mm -hmm. know, where their body has literally become the enemy, mm -hmm. you know, how, how does this play out? You know, 
the, it's all trauma, it's all stress, it's all anxiety. How can we not only think about this, you know, how we think about it, but I want to use this body to also affect how we're doing this. So I'm just thinking in circular, I want to give everybody every tool we have at our disposal with this thing that we call us. Mm -hmm. Okay, I just don't want to think about it. I want to think about it and then do stuff too. Mm -hmm. Okay, they're both important parts. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's just like a little, a little, you know, yeah. game that I usually like kind of play with people just to yeah. introduce them and get them aware of what, oh, I am doing something. It doesn't mean that, you know, some people jump on it and they go, oh yeah, but now you're blaming the people. I'm like, no, right. no, no, there's no blame. I'm just right. being, I'm, I'm teaching them how to use tools that they have at their disposal you know, that it's going to happen. They're going to do it either way. Whether they want to be right. aware of it, we're doing things with our body. Because the smaller fine and the constricting yourself in preparation for something is naturally going to happen. And then it's, it's also going to be associated with other cognitive responses, right, that have been absolutely. learned in preparation, uh, uh, you know, associated with that fight, flight, or freeze. So, so just to your point there, that we mm -hmm. associate with it, remember mm -hmm. back, and I love asking people this question, did I ever tell you that I was going to pop the balloon? Uh, no, I think you said I'm going to introduce. Yes. Because I thought it was a little clumpy. Clunky. Yeah. You saying that? I was like, why is he introducing the balloon? Why is he introducing? <laughs> I did introduce. Yeah. I happened yeah. to have my yeah. finger over the pointy part of the scissors so it didn't, mm -hmm. so it didn't hit it. So I introduced mm -hmm. it. But yeah. I never well, said I was going to pop the balloon. I, I gave you hints that that right. might happen. But right. we're awesome as human beings of noticing patterns and knowing it's a survival technique. Mm -hmm. Like, how do I survive? Oh, I recognize this pattern. Here's what usually happens following mm -hmm. this pattern. I want to mm -hmm. disrupt that and keep us open and relaxed enough to a be able to stay aware of what's going on now in this present moment. Not what we yeah. remember, not mm -hmm. what we're pre-planning. Mm -hmm. Okay. I never said I was going to pop that balloon. But everybody plans for the pop. Everybody plans for the break, you know, oh, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, and, and again, I mean, I just think this is just so relevant when you think about the, the impact of like, you know, toxic stress and, and trauma on the bodies of, of people, right? And how it impacts our health, right? Yeah. You know, these, these negative health outcomes that are associated with exposure to trauma. And we know it's, they're much more prevalent for people of color um you know like high blood pressure you know i really recently got diagnosed with high blood pressure i live a relatively healthy life but i know that it's attributable to a lot of things external that i'm experiencing right especially someone who's doing this work particularly in like constantly exposed to a lot of secondary vicarious trauma it's inevitable that it will have an effect on me and that was an impact in addition to my initial primary trauma experiences like the continuous mm -hmm. right and, and the way that that's affected my body. We know that that's, that's much more prevalent for people of color, uh, for women and so forth. And so, I mean, I'm just thinking about how this not only can just like help, it can help you live longer. Yeah. It can increase your lifespan um, by giving you some of the tools that you need um, to change your trauma reaction to an actual response that's developed yeah. through yes. using the skills of somatics. Yes. I, I like to say to people that we're not blindly react. What I'm trying to teach people is not to blindly react, mm -hmm. but to caringly respond. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because mm -hmm. it goes back to, if you buy into this premise, mm -hmm. that we're not only here that, and this is my, I, I buy into it. Mm -hmm. I'm here to be helping you as another human being. Mm -hmm. okay? I know everybody doesn't buy into that, but, mm -hmm. but if we're here to do that, that also applies to ourselves. We got to yeah. take care of ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. We and if you get doing that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, that's it. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's a big part of, you know, my focus and, and, and other work that I want to do is like how to heal the healers and support folks who are doing the work. Okay. Um, because we, we, you know, we oftentimes, you know, the, the, the reality is, is that we spend a lot of time focusing on helping and supporting and healing others, not only in professional contexts, but like, in our personal lives, our relationships, even walking down the street, you know, and, and we are like oftentimes the last time to the last person to get the support or reach out for the support or even ask for the help. 
um, that we need, right? And so, yeah, this is this is great stuff. Um, Rich, we got one minute, but like, are there any books? Is there any information that, that folks can um, share your information? I mean, on the yeah. live, on the information, your your website is there, but like any literature immediately that you would recommend for folks if they want to read further or learn more information? If they, if they want to dive into, like I said, somatics is this huge field. You look at it, if you chopped in somatic educators, you would keep find a million different things, all way different, okay? Mm -hmm. Different approaches and everything else. The closest thing, um, you know, that book-wise, check out uh, Paul Linden has a mm -hmm. few books. Being in Movement is mm -hmm. his program. Like mm -hmm. I said, dear friend of mine, colleague now, mentor of mine, has a few different books. If people mm -hmm. are interested, reach out to me. Uh, some of them, or, or Paul, but reach out. Some of them are deep dives. Like are better aimed towards like you know people like you or I, mm -hmm. you know, or therapists, people that do this work for people. Whereas others are aimed at, you know, more people that are going through the trauma, you mm -hmm. know, because sometimes it's not comfortable reading, <laughs> right. all, all right. the gritty, you know. So so do that. There's a group called uh, Is Meta I S M E T A dot org. That's, I serve on their board and everything else. And that's a huge group. Uh, it's an international group that all the different, you know, somatic practitioners that are professionally using this for not only the work that I do, but others use it just for movement, other, all different areas. That's another group for people to check out. And Rich, lastly, like, do you need a degree? Do you got to get a master's degree to practice this? There's uh -huh. some colleges that have started offering programs in this. It's mm -hmm. few and far between. Traditionally, it's like a mentorship apprentice sort of thing. Mm -hmm. You know, there's other things that have specific programs that, okay, you're going to study this for X number of years, this many hours. You're going to study. So it's program by program. Okay? okay. I took my, because I was aimed at very specific things. Um, you know, we I have two people in my family, immediate family that went through cancer, uh, you know, severe cancer things, a son and my wife, long-term survivors now, mm -hmm. and very close people, you know, to me that, you know, dealt with and are still dealing with sexual abuse. Okay. Yeah. So I had very specific things that most people that say, oh, I'm a somatic educator might not deal with. Mm -hmm. So I kind of went through, through the years specifically seeking out, you know, people that worked in these areas. Excellent. Excellent. You know. Excellent. Rich, thank you so much. Um, two minutes over, but it was well worth it. Um, those who <laughs> listen, um, those who are going to watch it on YouTube, don't forget if you can donate so we can like help Rich, who's a facilitator of the Weekends of Recovery. Um, you know, with this 90,000, we can, you know, host like a uh, hundred weekends of recovery. I mean, you know, serve a hundred men through our weekends of recovery uh, at Men Healing. Um, thank you so much for all the work you're doing. Keep smiling, keep popping those balloons, and keep <laughs> helping people caringly respond. All right, take care. Take care, right. man. Bye bye. bye.